One of the most common issues we face in growing tomatoes is leaf curl. In fact, I can't even count the number of you who have written in in the past few weeks about this very subject. Now, most of the leaf curl you get is absolutely nothing to worry about. In fact, it's a good thing. But there are a few types of leaf curl that are not only devastating to your plant, but can spread throughout the entire garden. In this video, I'm gonna go over the three main causes of leaf curl and what you need to do to either prevent it or take care of it once it happens. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Brian with California Garden TV. If you're looking to join an online gardening community that offers tips, tricks, and support, then you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss anything. Let's get growing. So I'm sorry if I look a little bit greasy today. We just got back from the beach. Um, it was so awesome to be out in the wide open spaces again. Uh, it was a beautiful day. But I'm back here now to film this very important subject that so many of you have been asking about. So there are three different causes of tomato leaf curl or tomato roll. Um, those are physiological, a herbicide drift or residue, and viral. So let's start with the most common and that is the physiological. So the symptoms of physiological leaf curl, and physiological means it's anything from, it's mostly environmental stress, heat, lack of water, sometimes overwatering, wind, dry weather, all of those can contribute to tomato leaf curl. And typically what you're gonna see is the, the leaves will stay their same green color, they, they won't change color, they might get thick, very leathery, and you're typically gonna see the leaves roll upward. Those are gonna be your symptoms. Now heat is one of the main causes of tomato leaf roll or curl. <clears throat> and like I said, the, you're gonna see the leaves rolling up. And this is actually a good thing. This is to protect the plant from losing too much moisture through evaporation and transpiration of the leaves. You know, when it's hot and the leaves are open, there's a lot of surface area there for evaporation to occur. And so what the tomato does in response to that is it curls up and that leaves less surface area for the sun to hit and uh, cause it to lose moisture. Now, a lot of people, when they see this, their first you know, knee jerk reaction is to run and water their tomatoes. And that might actually cause more harm than good. This is where the tomato, the, the finger trick, sticking it into the soil a couple inches and seeing what it's like because generally it's not a lack of water in the soil. It's just that the plant is losing more water through the leaves than it can pull in through the roots. And so it's gonna roll up like this. Now, one thing you can do other than just leave it alone is if it's really hot, 90 degrees or above, and we've talked about this before, you can throw some 30 to 50% shade cloth over the plant that might help the leaf roll uh, but it will definitely help keep the plant from dropping its flowers. Unless it's too hot over a long period of time and then even shade cloth won't help. Another reason that the tomato leaves might curl upward would be uh, dry conditions, windy conditions, anywhere, anything that's gonna cause those, those leaves to dry out, the tomato is gonna wrap, up, wrap itself up and protect itself from those situations. And it, it's really nothing to worry about. Uh, another more rare condition is an, an overabundance of nitrogen in the plant and in the soil, and that will also cause leaf roll. But that's a little more rare and most likely isn't the cause. Now with any of these issues that we've discussed with the leaf roll, it is not gonna affect the growing condition of the plant. It's not going to affect the fruiting other than the extended period above 90 degrees. Um, and you may or may not have leaf roll with that, but you definitely will get flower drop. But all the other reasons, don't even worry about it. Now, another problem that causes um, leaf curl is herbicide drift. And so if you're spraying herbicides somewhere in your garden, or if you live near someplace that is, and some of that residue drifts over onto your tomato plants, you're gonna see a different kind of leaf curl. In that situation, what you're gonna see is the stem part of the tomato leaf is going to bend down and the leaves are going to cup 
up on all edges. So not only will they be rolling up this way, but they'll also be rolling up this way. So it's gonna look like a cup. You're also gonna get some probably some discoloration, yellowing, browning, uh, that type of thing. But that's only gonna affect the leaves that were there during the herbicide drift. Uh, any leaves that come on after that, as long as there's no more herbicides in the area, uh, those should be fine. Now we're gonna get into a little bit uh, more of the worrisome types of tomato leaf curl, and that is the viral ones. Because once it happens, in most cases, it's pretty much impossible to, to turn around and the plant is pretty much toast. Now there are hundreds of viruses that can cause your tomato leaves to curl. The top three would be curly top, the yellow uh, tomato leaf mosaic virus, and the yellow curly leaf virus. Now, the most common I would say is the curly top virus. And that is, you know, the top portion of the plant, you're gonna start to see the leaves curl upward, very similar to the physiological curl. Um, and they might start to point upward as well, the whole leaf. There is one way to really kind of see the difference and make sure that you have the physiological issues and not the uh, viral issues. And that is watering your plants deeply at nighttime and then the next morning come out and check them and if they're back to normal then that was probably the physiological issue if they're not then you might have the viral issue probably the curly top virus now in and of itself the curly top virus just because you have it in one plant and even if it's right next to another plant and they're even touching it doesn't mean it's going to spread it to that plant it's a systemic problem that's actually caused by the uh, the leaf hopper bug. And the leaf hopper, if it's already chewed on an infected plant and then chews on an un unaffected plant, it can give the virus to that plant. Now, if there's already fruit on the plant, those fruit might, depending on the stage they're at, they might continue to ripen. If they're early on, they may be stunted and they might may ripen prematurely. The best thing to do if you have the curly top issue is to get rid of the plant you know because if the leaf hoppers come and bite that plant and then bite the plant you have next to it it's going to spread that way so as hard as it is it would be better to ruin one plant than to ruin your whole crop now there is a way to try to prevent the the virus and that is don't give the leaf hoppers a place where they love to eat and that means they love to eat in the sunshine the bright hot sunshine and so, again, here's where the shade cloth comes in. 30 to 50% covering the plant. It's not only gonna protect you from some of the physio physiological issues, but the leaf hoppers won't really wanna eat in the shade. So it, at least it's a way you can try. Now, another virus that's quite common is the tomato mosaic virus. And that causes rolling of the leaves, but other symptoms including kind of mottled coloring of leaves, small leaves, and you're going to see internal browning of the infected fruit. Now again, there's no treatment for this once you have it, and I don't know of any preventative measures that you can take. It's kind of like, it's just luck. I mean, if you guys, if you've heard of something that, that can prevent that, um, please share it down below in the comments. Now, unfortunately, this is another virus that really can't be controlled once you have it. Um, and I don't really know of any way to prevent it. So if you do, let us know down in the comments. Um, I think it's just kind of luck. If you get it, you have it and you need to get rid of the plant. This is also one of those viruses that lives in the soil for up to two years. And so this is one of those reasons I say, don't let the water splash from the soil onto the leaves because you're gonna spread it that way. So a good layer of mulch, Watering from below is the best way to, I guess that is a preventative. <laughs> so the third most common virus is gonna be the tomato yellow leaf curl virus. That virus causes a range of symptoms that include marginal leaf yellowing, upward or downward leaf cupping, uh, reduction in leaf size, flower or fruit drop, and plant stunting. Now this virus is spread by whitefly. And the best way to prevent this is to keep the white fly population in your garden under control by spraying neem oil every week or two. And that's gonna prevent the spread of white flies and 
in turn the spread of the virus. However, once you have the disease, you cannot get rid of it, and this is another bad one. And so what you want to do, because those white flies that have infected it can move on to other plants and infect them. So take a large black or clear trash bag or large piece of plastic and wrap the tomato plant in it and then take the, the bottom of that bag or the top of the bag, I guess, the open end and tie it around the tomato trunk at soil level and then cut it off, cut the trunk off at soil level, let it sit in the sun for a day or two. That's gonna kill all the white fly in the bag and hopefully contain most of the virus and then definitely start a neem schedule after that. Now, as a side note with all of these viral issues, do not add the tomato plant to your compost bin. It needs to go in the trash because you don't wanna spread this through the compost that you put out next year, next season. So I hope this answers a lot of your guys' questions that you've had. And uh, if you get right on it and try those preventative measures, hopefully you won't run into these problems. But if you do, and they are the bad kind, you know what you need to do. Thanks for watching, guys. If you learned something, as always, please give the video a thumbs up. I hope you're subscribed already. And give me a comment down below. I would appreciate it. I do try to read them all and get back to as many as I can. And I will see you guys next time.